they have Allagash White here. Do they? You know, I actually don't like that. I'm gonna order it cool. in, in honor of your book. That's fantastic. This Pilsner, please, thanks. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I ask him to do that. <laughs> That's fine, man. <laughs> I, I usually bring two forms sure, of... this is uh, really nice <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'd bust your chops a little bit because I was looking at your actual, of your photo in yeah, this book. Yeah, that's me. You don't look more than 14 years old here. What, Do people is, bust your chops for you looking eternally youthful? Oh yeah, although ever since I was a little kid. Well, cheers. cheers. Yeah, thank thanks, you very much. Hey, for thanks for having me. Allagash beer. Yeah. Where'd you get the name Allagash for Elliot? Oh, last name. There's this river in Maine, the biggest river in Maine, um, the Allagash River. When I was trying to conjure up like a you know, sinister robber baron name, something like Carnegie or Vanderbilt or yeah. Rockefeller. Uh, Allagash just kind of popped into my it head. Felt right. It felt right. It felt it's scary it's to got, me. It's kind of like a gnarly sort of like yeah. Allagash. Yeah. 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 I first got the idea for this book when I was in uh, college and I read this great book about Ivan the Terrible. Okay. And I was uh, blown away by how young he was when he started committing his murders. How, how old was he? He was six years old and he was already... He was a murderer at six. Murderer at six. Incredibly precocious murderer. And he was evil from the get-go, you know, he, he wasn't... Precocious murderers yeah. are always the worst. They're the worst, they're the worst. <laughs> I thought I'd write an Ivan the Terrible novel, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like a, like that Great Graves novel, I, Claudius, you know, sort okay. of like a period, a period yeah, yeah. novel. And then I started thinking, and also wouldn't it be more interesting if Ivan the Terrible was born, you know, right here, right now? Sure. Uh, in New York City. In New York City. Yeah. You've had, like, collected comedy books before that collected, right. you know, pieces. What was the major difference going from someone who's used to writing shorter pieces to writing a longer piece? How, how did that kind of, yeah. how did your approach change? Good comedy novels, they're, they're, made out of, they're made out of little premises. You know, if you read sure. Catch-22, if you read, you know, Confederacy of Dunces, I mean, they go off on tangents. Huge and, tangents. And it's, you know, when you're... When you have a few characters and they live in a house and they're living their lives, you can really get fenced in. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I realized that if I was ever going to write a comedy novel that, that it was actually uh, readable yeah. and people would actually want to finish voluntarily, I need to have a character who could go anywhere and do anything whenever he felt like it. Saturday Night Live, it seems like writing for Saturday Night Live and writing a novel would be very, very different yeah. forms of writing. Yeah. Is there anything that's the same? At the end of the day, you are still writing premises. Mm -hmm. You're still coming up with situational comedy. You're still taking a normal situation and thinking, what could go horribly wrong here that would, sure. that would elicit laughs? You know, what's right, the worst right. thing that could happen? At the same time, there's, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to write, uh, to relax into a story a little. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, have, uh, have paragraphs that aren't stuffed with jokes. Sometimes you come up with a premise that's, that you really like and you think is really mm -hmm. conducive to joke telling, mm -hmm. but to set it up, you know, it's gonna take like three pages. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you, can't, you can't have three minutes of setup on a, on a sketch show, you know, with six and a half million people watching, so. Did you start off just like writing right away or did you work with other writers oh, or how did it no, go? They, I mean, they throw you right in. They throw you okay. right into the in with the sharks. It's crazy. Okay. I mean, and it's, it can be scary, but it's also exhilarating. One thing, one thing I learned at SNL was, was how to try to think visually. It was like my fifth episode or something or sixth episode. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this uh, sketch for Ellen Page, this Peter Pan sketch. Captain Hook is very mad at his crew because they haven't yet murdered this boy. Mm -hmm. How hard could it be to murder a boy? It became the most visually complicated thing ever because the sketch had to have, uh, and just production-wise, it was inc crazily complicated. There was music, Ooh. there was choreography, there was original songs, there was... There was a wire, There was right? a flying, there yeah, was special yeah. effects, there was smoke, there was a green screen for Tinkerbell. Because mm -hmm. after I wrote it, I was just like, well, I'm excited to see this on Saturday. <laughs> and then it was like, oh no, you have to put it all together. Oh. Yeah, and it was 72 hours of me like frantically trying to learn what a green screen was and you know like <laughs> talking to these like talking to the amazing fly guys uh -huh. and like being like can she can she fly that way and you know and and oh uh, but luckily yeah the senior the senior writers helped me through that one but it was like um, when I started at that job I never ever saw things at all. Uh -huh. The last question we always ask uh, the writers who come on this video is who is your favorite hard drinking writer? Favorite or, hard drinking or, or, writer. Or an alcoholic writer. Yeah. If you can God, think. there's so many to choose from. I know. Um, golly. Truman Capote? Well, I mean, but I just read Kingsley Amos' drinking book on drinking. 
You know, and when Christopher Hitchens did the show, Casey yeah. Amos was his favorite uh, alcoholic. Yeah, writer. yeah, that's that's one of the all-time great drinking books, and that's saying something. 